Assemblyman Anthony Brindisi on here right now this morning. Good morning, Anthony. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, everyone. Oh, Bica, did you see that smile go right off his face? Well, I, I think you, t- you took the words out of my mouth. I said the yeah. school board does pay so well. So yeah, that's no exactly it. So, all right, so tell me what's going on with DFES. Uh, Congresswoman Tenney saying she's as a, a, a provision inside the, uh, the legislation that would prevent uh, any layoffs or any reduction in, in uh, staff size at DFES out in Rome. What, uh, what's your take on this? Well, it's a little bit of smoke and mirrors. The, the fact is that the uh, Defense Authorization Act that passed the House last week, which funds all the, the budget and expenditures for the Department of Defense, within that uh, massive legislation contains a provision that uh, has a 25% cut to the workforce at DFAS. And DFAS has locations here in Rome where they employ over 960 people, $66 million in payroll. They have locations in Ohio, Indiana, uh, in Maine. And in this bill, uh, this cut is in there. Now, what she is trying to say is that there's an amendment after this cut that says uh, it's not intended to hurt the workers at DFES. The fact is, why not just take the cut out completely? Why the need for an amendment? Just don't have the cut altogether. And her amendment, which uh, really does nothing, it's toothless, and that's why the workers and the union stood with me yesterday, because they recognize that as well. All it says is nothing, and I'm reading exactly what the amendment says, nothing in this section shall be construed to encourage or require the termination of any personnel at DFES. So we're going to put this cut in. That's what one part of the bill says. But the other part of the bill, which she's hanging her hat on, says we're, we're making this cut, but we don't encourage you, Department of Defense, and we don't require you to make this cut. That, to me, is got so many holes in it yeah. that they could do whatever they want. The bottom line is the cut should have never been there in the first place, and if she was fighting for the people and the workers back here home, it wouldn't have been there. Uh, as an attorney, um, these are the, the words that are used in um, whether it's a law or legislation that's proposed, what have you. Uh, I, I think that's everything an attorney would tell you. I feel that it's just too ambiguous. Uh, is that where you're going with this thing? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. A- absolutely. Yeah. Why, why have the cut in the first place? Just don't put the cut in there at all. And then you don't need to have language later on in the in the act trying to clarify your intention. Just don't have the cut to begin with. And that's why we're pushing now that the, this bill has passed the House. The Senate hasn't written the bill yet. They, they're going to write their own version of the Defense Authorization Act and then take it up uh, separately. And that's why we're working now with our U.S. senators, not just here in New York, but in Ohio where there's DFAS, in Indiana uh, where there's DFAS, to make sure that the cut uh, is taken out completely, because we don't want to see any ambigu- ambiguity sure. in this legislation. We want to make sure that those workers and those jobs are protected. Uh, Andrew, now if it go, you know, when it goes to the Senate, uh, the original bill, or, the, or excuse me, the one that they write their own, there's no guarantee that that amendment will will pass the Senate and ultimately end up on President Trump's desk. Correct. Well, there's, there's, there's a great uh, likelihood that amendment won't even be in the Senate bill, uh, hopefully, if our, if our senators just keep the cut out altogether. Uh, and that's what we're anticipating, is that there will no, there'll be no cut to DFAS at all in the Senate version. That's my hope. Uh, and I know the hope of the workers at DFAS, that the Senate version does not contain a cut whatsoever. <clears throat> that's the cleanest way to get this thing yeah. taken care of, instead of relying on... Uh, you know, uh, uh, amendments that could be left open for interpretation. Uh, I got a guy, Rob, saying you're splitting hairs. Um uh, talk about that. Respond uh, to that. Uh, look, we have been on the receiving end of defense cuts in this area for many years, and we're finally actually growing the operations at DFES, uh, where we hope to be over a thousand workers by Christmas. Uh, for every one opening, there's 80 applicants that apply for a job there. They're good paying jobs. I'll split hairs all day long to make sure that we know for a fact that there's not going to be one job lost at DFES. And the fact of the matter is, if we had a representative who was looking out for these issues instead of the other things she's preoccupied with, she would be doing the same thing and making sure that there's no cut in any bill that would go to our DFAS workers here in Rome. Uh, I do have to say, in any contract negotiations I've been involved in, uh, there was one time where I felt my attorney was splitting hairs, and it was the worst deal I ever signed, and it came back to haunt me. Um, So I, I do have to say that if there's even a chance, you can't walk away and say, I understand there's a chance they're not going to do that. 
you you can't look at it that way. You you can't sleep at night that way. As long as there's a as long as the language is in there and it passed the House bill and yeah. it's in there that there's a twenty five percent cut to DFAS, uh, we're not splitting hairs. That's black and white. Uh, the amendment is the gray area, and why even have the cut in there in the first place and rely on some hodgepodge amendment that was put together to try and provide cover because they didn't want to vote. The House members obviously they don't want to vote against the, uh, the Defense Authorization Act because uh, then they'd be voting against military funding. Uh, and, and, and there's lots of great things in there. Yeah. But the bottom the bottom line is they they put this amendment in there because there's some other congressman who has it out for DFAS who has a little more seniority than some of our uh, representatives that represent DFAS who has it out for DFAS who put this 25 percent cut in there and then to provide cover to our our, our delegation here uh, they put this amendment in there. But the amendment is toothless and we hope at the Senate level there's no cut in there whatsoever. That way we can't leave these things open for interpretation. Uh, I want to ask you on another topic. Uh, I don't know if you read the OD today. There's uh, every day, um, it seems, whether it's the Rome paper in the Valley, the OD, there's somebody piping in on, on this race. Today, it's Jason Harry in New York Mills. I just want to read what he says, and I want your take on it. Anthony Brindisi is a puppet in this race. After former Assembly Speaker Sheldon Silver donated to his campaigns, he voted with him nearly 100% of the time and elected him Speaker. With Nancy Pelosi contributing to his campaign, it wouldn't be surprising if he rewarded her the same way. Uh, how do you well, respond? Those are, those are talking points taken right from my opponent's uh, playbook. Essentially, you can look at my record. When it took time, when it, when it was time to stand up against the governor on issues, I've done that. I've been very vocal in my opposition on some of his policies. I've also worked with the governor to get things done on certain areas. When it came time to uh, oust Sheldon Silver, uh, because of his troubles, I was one of the first members in the Assembly to stand up and do that. I already said I'm not voting for Nancy Pelosi if uh, if she decides to run for Speaker. I've never been a rubber stamp. I never will be a rubber stamp. And I'll always stand up for what's best for the people in this area. Uh, but they're going to try and say that I'm uh, uh, this and that and uh, distort my record because, uh, obviously, my opponent has no record to run on. She's voted for a disastrous health care bill that would keep people off of their insurance. She voted for a tax bill that gives uh, most of the benefit to the top 1% in this country. Uh, we saw a study last week that came out that said of all the Fortune 500 companies, all the workers that work for those companies, only 4.3% saw a raise in their paycheck from those companies. So these companies are not sharing their tax windfall with the workers who deserve a tax cut. Uh, she voted for that. She voted to allow Internet pro- providers to sell their, your privacy. I'm battling Spectrum right now for these high cable prices. Guess who my, my opponent's biggest donor is? Charter Communications, which owns Spectrum. Do uh, you think she has an interest in fighting them uh, for high cable prices that people are experiencing? So I've never been a rubber stamp. I won't be in Congress. Uh, unfortunately, that's what we have right now representing us. Why is Nancy, uh, why is Nancy Pelosi still there? Um, yeah. What power does she have? Because she does not seem to be good for, for the Democratic Party. She doesn't seem popular anymore amongst her yeah. colleagues either. The, the the purpose I'm running is because I want to bring change to Washington. I want to see some some uh, some new leadership on both sides of the aisle, yeah. and I want to work with folks on both sides of the aisle to get things done. Uh, you know, that's the issue we have uh, in, uh, in why I support term limits in in the assembly because we have uh, people who are in charge of uh, chairmanships and uh, things like that for for many many years. There's no turnover and there's no new ideas coming in. We got to have some new ideas and some fresh ideas every once in a while. Uh, that's something I'm, I'm uh, incredibly for. Quickly, uh, a clarification and a follow-up. You're saying Spectrum is the largest donate, uh, donor to Claudia they are one of, uh, Charter Communications, you can look up the FEC filings. Charter Communications, which is the owner of Spectrum, is one of the largest contributors to Claudia Tenney's campaign uh, in this congressional race. That's a fact. And you are saying that they're <clears throat> it's buying some influence in particular with uh, legislation? Well, I can tell you that I'm speaking out against uh, everyone's cable prices going up right now, in some cases 40%, but I'm not beholden to Spectrum because they're not funding my campaign, so I'm, I'm not afraid to speak out against them. I don't hear her speaking out much against some of these high prices, whether it's high gas prices. She's Exxon Mobil's one of her biggest contributors, and she hasn't said a word about high gas prices, uh, high cable prices. Spectrum is one of her biggest contributors. The problem we have right now is everyone's prices are going up, whether it's gas prices, prescription drugs, cable prices, despite the fact that these companies have seen massive windfalls from this tax bill. They're reaping record profits and still raising everyone's gas prices and cable prices and cell phone prices. 
And the reason they're able to get away with that is because they bankroll people's campaigns like they're doing for my opponent. I've said I'm not taking one dime of corporate PAC money in this election, so I don't have to worry about speaking out against these big companies. And that's the problem we have in Washington right now is everyone's too afraid to speak out because then they're worried that their their campaign coffers will dry up. And let me get your reaction to this. You said uh, when you talked about the Fortune 500 companies, you said those employees deserve a tax cut. I think she would argue we did give them a tax cut. Now you can get into whether it's a long term or a short term, but the working class did get a tax cut. The, the working class deserves a tax cut. I would have preferred to see more of the tax bill go to working individuals and the middle class. What I said was the employers, those Fortune 500 companies, who all said they were going to share the increased profits that they took in because of this tax bill. They were going to increase the wages of their workers. Of all those workers that work for those Fortune 500 companies, only 4.3% of them have seen any increase in their wages from their employer. So you look at, like, Harley-Davidson, another example, took this big, massive tax windfall and then closed a big plant of theirs and laid off a bunch of workers. So they take a big tax cut, and they don't share it with their workers. That's the problem we have, yeah. and that's what I was referring to. Uh, all right, uh, Mario, uh, your friend Mario asked the question, why will you not hold any town hall meetings uh, on the hospital, the downtown hospital? I had, I've had five town hall meetings in Oneida County and Herkimer County in just the last year. Okay. I don't know what he's talking about. Do you restrict it? Would you I, say? I haven't, seen, do you I haven't res- seen Mario come to one of those. Of course, Mario doesn't identify himself either, so why would he? Uh, do you restrict? I mean, could someone come and ask questions about the hospital at your town hall Absolutely. meetings? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. In, 20, in 2017, last year, we had uh, five town hall meetings in Oneida County and Herkimer County related to the work I'm doing in the state assembly. At those meetings, I think I got one question about the hospital came from one of the uh, opponents of the uh, downtown site. Uh, I've been holding town hall meetings this year in each district, in each county in the congressional district. We're going to be doing one in Oneida County this summer. I had one in Herkimer County last week. Uh, so I'm I'm probably some, one of the most accessible uh, people out there, and people can reach out and ask me any question. I encourage Mario to come to one of these town hall meetings, identify himself, uh, and ask me a question. All right, uh, Assemblyman Anthony Brindisi, we appreciate it, and we will talk again. Thanks so much. Thank you, Bill. All right. Uh, Got to say, uh, we have opened the door and reached out to Congresswoman Tenney, given her a chance to respond. Uh, we reached out again here this morning, and uh, we would love the opportunity for her to give us her take on what the Assemblyman, her opponent, just had to say.